This is a demonstration of what my first video, How Stone Tools Were Made, Part 1, um, how it was meant to uh, explain how stone tools were made. I'm using a, some potatoes today. What I have seen on most videos on YouTube shows that uh, those folks took a stone and carved it and carved it and knocked off chips until they created the tool. Yes, it can be done that way. But from the proof I have seen in my collection and videos that I have seen showing other folks um, not really understanding the stone itself, I think I need to make this a little bit plain and short today, but I uh, really wish you'd watch my first video, the first one I made a few months ago. First of all, this method of making stone tools, which is hundreds of thousands of years old, leaves little debris. All of the stone is used up. There will be pecking. And then, and then um, sanding with a wedge-shaped stone. This is all to remove that end piece. These end pieces makes wonderful tools, um, often called turtles, but they could be split in half or even quarter depending on the size of the stone. Then the stone is positioned so that pecking and sanding will allow those two side pieces to be split away easily, revealing that center platter. I have shown in my videos many examples of the tools that can be made from these side pieces. It's important to remember this flat spot um, it will help you identify many many tools. I have found the evidence of um, this these two breaks on nearly all of the tools that shows this base. The first breaks appear to always be down here at the bottom at the base and these tools or these stones seem to always become wedges which are a very handy tool to have, especially when splitting stone. I have shown in my videos many examples of the tools that can be made from these side pieces. The stone can then be split many ways to make many tools. The heart stone is almost always, in my collection, shows the base right up here. Some of these pieces can be pressure flaked or napped into knives, large spearheads, crescent shaped tools, for cutting and abrasion use. And I found most of these crescent shaped tools have an elephant on each end. 
side pieces can be turned into axe heads and various other things. And the cortex on the stone is great for carving effigies. And nearly every tool that I have have one or two effigies on it. This method of making stone tools seems to have been lost around the beginning of the Bronze Age. And uh, focus have been more on this type of creating tools. But that's the ancient way.